Hello students, this video contains sample paper of class 9 NSO Science Olympiad. So this paper consists of uh, 50 questions which is divided into 3 sections. First 10 question would be logical reasoning and the next 25 question would be science and the last 5 question would be achiever section. The last section science and achiever sections uh, syllabus would be your uh, syllabus as, as, per the, as per your syllabus class 9. So let's move into the video. The first section is logical reasoning. Question number one. A number series is given with one term missing. Choose the correct option that will continue the same pattern. So a pattern is given here. 2 comma 3, 3 comma 5, 5 comma 7 and 7 comma 11. 11 comma 13 the next series we have to find out as you can see the given sequence uh, in the form of prime numbers yes 2 3 and 5 7 11 13 so all the numbers are prime numbers so we need to find out what would be the next pattern yes so what would be the next pattern the given sequence consists of you can see you can see the consist of Pair of consecutive prime numbers. Pair of consecutive. Pair of consecutive prime numbers. Which means after 2, the prime, next prime number would be 3. Then after 3, the next prime number would be 5. After 5, the next prime number is 7. So in the same way, after 11, the prime number would be 13. So the next uh, prime number after 11 is 13. Then what would be the next prime number after 13 is? It's 17. So your answer is option C. 13 comma 17 is the right answer. Question number 2. In a certain code language, explaining is written as PXE ALNIGNI. How is production written in that language? So first we will find out uh, the relation between the word explaining exp l a i n i n g so the given word is coded as p x e a l n i g n i so in explaining totally turn let us so that in uh, let us has been divided into some parts like 3, 2, 2, again 3. So now we can see the first 3 letters are reversed. You can see in coded word the first 3 letter has been reversed. And again the next 2 letter has also re reversed. Then again next 2 letters. This is the first 3. The next 2 letter also been reversed here. Then again next two letter and then again last three letter are reversed. Right. You can see here. E. Yes. Likewise. So this is the way they find out that code word. Yes. So the same way we have to find out for production also. P R O D u c t i o n so first we'll uh, split 3 2 2 and the last one is 3 then you draw the arrow mark first so that you can easily find out the words yes so they have just reversed the first three letters so o r p then u c T C then N O I. So the record word is O R P U C. Sorry, it is U D. Yes, so I have written it is wrong. U D then T C then N O I. So this is the record answer for here. And so option C is the right answer. Question number 3. Find the missing number 
if the same rule is followed in all the three figures. So first we will find out what is the relation uh, has been followed in the given figure. 93 minus 27 is equal to it is 66. So 66 minus 3 is 63. So now we will follow the same rule for the second figure also. So 79 minus 38 it would be 41 right so again 41 minus 4 is it is 37 so now we got here 37 same rule 67 minus 16 it is 51 so by which number if we subtract so that we will get 42 yes it is 51 minus 8 which is equal to 42 right so hence our record answer is it's 8 option c is a right answer for this question question number 4 which of the following options shows the correct mirror image of the given combination of letters and numbers if the mirror is placed vertically to the left so what will happen if you place a mirror here vertically left yes the particular image will be laterally inverted or which means the rightmost part becomes the leftmost and vice versa. That is the letter A must be at the right. Must be at right. The same way the letter 9 must be at left. And all the letters should be vertically inverted. Right. So if you do if you to do so this uh, these steps so that you will get the answer. Option D is the right answer for this question. Question number five in the given series, how many fives are there? which are immediately preceded by 9 and immediately followed by 6. So first what we will do means just mark it out the 5. How many 5's are there in the given series? 5, 5, okay. Then we will check out how many 5's are there preceded by 9 and followed by 6. Yes, here the 9 is preceded and it is not followed by the number 5 is not followed by 6. So we will strike out. And here the number 5 is preceded by 9 and as well as followed by 6. So let us take it out of count. Then the 5 should be preceded by 9. No, here it is 3. So we will strike it out. And then the, the number 5 should be preceded by 6. So here it is wrong. So we will strike it out. And here also the number 5 should be preceded by 9 but it is preceded by 4. So we will strike it out. So, how many uh, fives are there? Yes, only one. So, hence option B is the right answer. Question number 6. A sample of ammonia weighs 4 gram. What mass of sulfur dioxide contains the same number of molecules as are in 4 gram of ammonia? So, first we will write down what is the chemical formula for ammonia. It is NH3. And for sulfur dioxide, it is SO2. Right. Now, we will write that mass of is given. The mass of NH3 is, this one is given part, that is 4 gram. But we need to find what is the exact molar mass of, or you can say it is a molecular mass as well. Molar mass of NH3. It is very simple thing. So, N plus H3, which means, what is the atomic number of uh, N? That is atomic mass number of N is, nitro is uh, 14, right? So, we will write 14. Then plus atomic number of 1 hydrogen is 1. So, 1 into 3. So, totally the atomic mass number or you can say molar mass of NH3 is 17 gram. If it is atomic mass number, you can say it is 17 U. But we need what is, uh, but we need 
molar mass oh, so we'll write it as a 17 gram right so therefore the number of moles of ammonia how many moles of ammonia here that is number of moles of NH3 that is number of moles of NH3 is equal to so totally 17 so after 17 here we have only 4 gram so that is called 4 by 17 moles now coming to the sulfur dioxide first uh, we don't know what is the mass of a sulfur dioxide right mass of sulfur dioxide mass of SO2 is equal to x and then we will write what how, amount of SO2 so amount of SO2 is equal to mass of SO2 which is divided by molar mass of molar mass of SO2 so uh, first we have to find out what is molar mass of SO2 right that is SO2 means sulfur plus 2 oxygen that is 2 into we will write here so what is the atomic uh, mass number of sulfur yes it is 32 again plus 2 oxygen so the one atomic mass number of one oxygen atom is it is 16 right so 32 plus 32 is 64 which means the molar mass of SO2 we will write here molar mass of SO2 equal to 64 so as I, written, as I written here mass of SO2 is it is x it is x no x divided by 64 x divided by 64 mole so as per the question the mass of sulfur dioxide contains the same number of molecules as are in 4 gram of molecule so now we will equate both the things that is x by 64 is equal to 4 by 17 so now we will get x is equal to 4 into 64 divided by 17 so when you solve this uh, part so that you are you will get the answer x is 15.0 15.05 gram so that is the mass of sulfur dioxide 15.05 gram is the right answer for this question question number 7 a metal sphere of mass 12 kg has the same diameter as another sphere of mass 4 kg both spheres are dropped simultaneously from a tower when they are 8 meter above the ground they have the same dash options are kinetic energy potential energy momentum and acceleration so it is given that we have two metal sphere one one weighs 12 kg and another weights it's a 4 kg right so when the two spheres are dropped simultaneously from a tower it must have some acceleration right so it have some acceleration both will fall under the same acceleration that is called g which is equal to 9.8 meter per second square right this is nothing but acceleration small letter g means what it is acceleration due to gravity so when a two spheres are dropped simultaneously from a tower it must have some acceleration due to gravity so both the sphere uh, have the same acceleration that is called 9.8 meter per second square so in a free fall whatever the object it's uh, which is a fall from certain height it does not that particular acceleration does not depend on the mass of the object that we have already knew that right that is in a free fall in a free fall acceleration that is that acceleration 
does not depend on the mass of the object does not depend on the mass of the object so the one sphere uh, weighs 12 kg and another sphere weighs 4 kg both the masses are different even though they are having the same acceleration due to gravity so when they are 8 meter above the ground they have the same acceleration hence option t is the right answer for this question question number 8 read the given statements and mark the correct option statement 1 echo is always produced when sound is incident on hard and polished surface statement 2 sound energy can be totally reflected by objects with a soft and loose texture so first we'll find out whether this uh, the statement 1 is uh, correct or incorrect so it is uh, it is given that echo is always produced when it is incident on hard and polished surface no it is false echo is produced due to the reflection right due to the echo is produced due to the reflection of sound due to the reflection of sound from any hard and soft surface any hard and soft surface but here it is given as echo is produced only in hard surface no next the statement 2 sound energy can be totally reflected by objects with a soft and loose texture it is also false because the sound energy cannot be reflected from soft cannot be reflected first you should understand sound energy cannot be reflected cannot be reflected from soft and loose texture right soft and loose texture loose texture as they also absorb some energy so sound energy it is given here sound energy can be totally reflected no sound energy cannot be reflected from soft and loose texture as they also absorb some energy so hence both the statement 1 and statement 2 are false option d is the right answer question number 9 what happens to the inertia of an object when its velocity is doubled the object's inertia becomes two times lesser the object's inertia becomes two times greater the object inertia becomes four times greater the object inertia remains the same so what would be the answer here yes there will be no change there will be a no change in inertia there will be no change in inertia when the velocity is doubled why because inertia is always dependent only on the mass of the object mass of the object so when the velocity of the object gets increases its momentum only will get increases or the momentum will be doubled so as per the question there will be no change in the inertia when the velocity is doubled and option d is the right answer question number 10 boiling points of a few gases found in air are given below gases are krypton neon nitrogen oxygen and their boiling points is given here krypton minus 152 neon minus 246 and nitrogen is minus 196 degrees celsius oxygen is minus 183 degrees celsius if liquid mixture is a fractionally distilled the order of gases distilling out is so the gases always distilled out in the order of increasing boiling points which means the gases with the lowest boiling point right gases gases with the lowest boiling point gases with the lowest boiling point first distill out so which has the lowest boiling point here yes it's minus it's neon gas so first it will uh, get distill out afterwards minus 126 it is nitrogen and third one is it's oxygen and the last one 
is its krypton so the order is neon nitrogen oxygen krypton hence option b is a right answer for this question so what is the key point here yes the gas is always distilled out in the order of increasing boiling points that means from lower to higher right so hence option b is a right answer for this question question number 11 the freezing and boiling points of a substance of p are minus 220 degree celsius and minus 185 degree celsius respectively at which the following at which of the following range of temperatures will p exist as a liquid so first the freezing point of the substance p is minus 220 degree celsius the freezing point is nothing but a melting point in this uh, freezing point the temperature of a liquid turns into a solid understand at this particular point the liquid turns into a solid and what is a uh, boiling point at this particular temperature that liquid starts to boil so the question is at which of the following range of the temperature will p exist as liquid so at this um, at this particular temperature also the particular sapi substance will be in liquid state and as well in this minus 185 degrees celsius at this particular temperature also that particular substance will be will be in liquid state so at which of the following range of the temperature so the particular substance p exists as a liquid in between these two temperatures the range between these two temperatures that is option d are between minus 195 degree celsius and minus 250 degree celsius the particular substance will remain as a liquid so hence option d is the right answer for this question question number 12 which of the following statements about spongila leech dolphin and penguin is correct options are penguin is a homeotherapic it's a mistake here it's a homeotherapic homeothermic while the remaining three are poikilothermic yes it is given that penguin is a homeotherapic while the remaining three what are all remaining three it's a spongila and dolphin and leech so we all know the dolphin is a mammal right so all mammals are warm blooded animals so it is given here warm blood animal means it is a homeothermic homeothermic dolphin is a homeothermic so it is given here dolphin is a poikilothermic so it is wrong so this statement a is totally wrong then leech is found in fresh water form while all others are marine uh, leech is found in fresh water whereas this spongila is a fresh water animal spongila is a fresh water animal so it is given all others are marine so this is also wrong then option uh, c spongila has a special collar cells called conochoids not found in the remaining three yes the spongila possesses some collar cells special collar cells right or you can say it is a flagellated cells which helps in ingestion of food particles but not found in remaining three so this statement is true then option d all are bilaterally symmetrical no whereas this spongila no the spongila is a this is a cylindrical shape cylindrical shape and most important is it is a asymmetrical structure spongila is a asymmetrical structure so it is given here all are bilaterally symmetrical so this is also wrong hence option c is a right answer for this question Question number thirteen. Refer to the given figure and identify from the marked alphabets A, B, C, D, which is responsible for the following functions. The first one is protects the DNA from various chemical reaction that takes place outside the nucleus. Second one selective barrier, allowing certain substances in or out of the nucleus. Third one is separates nuclear and cytoplasmic constituents. they have given options as a b and c and option d is both a and d so the given functions refers to its option a it's a nuclear membrane or you can call it as a nuclear envelope and one more thing is the given figure is is nucleus so a refers to nuclear membrane or you can say it is a nuclear envelope 
so these are the functions which is given here it will protect the dna from various chemical reaction that takes place outside the nucleus it's the function of nuclear membrane so hence option a is the right answer for this question question number 14 fill in the blanks the dash of a sound is determined by its dash the dash of the sound wave depends upon the force with which an object is made to vibrate a sound of dash frequency is called a dash the first answer is its amplitude the amplitude the amplitude of a sound is determined by its loudness again the loudness of the sound the loudness of the sound depends upon the force with which an object is made to vibrate a sound of double frequency a sound of double frequency is called a note we know the sound of single frequency is called tone single frequency is a uh, tone so as per the option which is given over here so we are going to select that is option a the amplitude of sound is determined by its loudness the loudness of the sound wave depends upon the force with which an object is made to vibrate a sound of double frequency is called a note hence option a is the right answer for this question question number 15 Four stripes of fresh potato P, Q, R and S of equal length were immersed in solution of different concentration. Osmosis occurred according to the concentration difference between cell sap and ambient solution. The results are shown in the given graph which of these stripes was placed in the most diluted solution. Okay, so first um, they have taken uh, four stripes of uh, potato in equal lengths. And immersed in a solution of different concentration so different concentration means let us take up for example let us take up we have let's take two solution one is a sugar solution and another one is a water it's a normal water solution so now you can now you say uh, which will be more diluted yes when compared to a uh, sugar solution water solution will be more diluted right this will be the most diluted solution So what happened when you immerse this type of potato in a most diluted solution? What will happen? What or during that uh, osmosis? What will happen? Yes, when you place the potato stripe uh, in in most diluted solution called water. For example, I am saying its cells will gain water. Its cells will gain water. Cells will gain water by osmosis. So if it gains water means water will be the resultant. Yes, it will the size of the stripe get increases. The size of that potato stripe get increase. Right. So now we'll move on to the graph. You can see here the length of the stripe get decreased by minus 2. And the length of the stripe get decreased uh, up to minus 3. Here the length of the stripe get increased plus 2. And here plus 3. So now what we have seen here. When you immerse the potato stripe in a most diluted solution. Obviously the size of the stripe get increased. So which stripe get uh, increased for. Yes you can see here. The size of the stripe R get increased up to 3 millimeter. So, which is which of these stripes was placed in the most diluted solution? Yes, obviously, it's option C, the stripe called R. 